All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today's video is a fairly straightforward one, but it's a type that I know many of you enjoy, and that's when we look at some of the aftermarket available for these cars, dig into the history and info on a particular part, and shed some light on things that maybe newer owners aren't aware of. So today, obviously, we have Dijon here. Brought it over in the middle of winter to focus on one part on it. You may recall this has been in videos before and we've seen it on the site before, of course. The last time we had a full video on it was when we did the SS tuning flares and skirts and other little parts as part of a makeover for it a few years ago. We've seen it since briefly in some other videos. But today I want to talk front lips and specifically this one here. So the 2012 through 2014 Mark III's, the non-ST version or base models as they're often referred to regardless of actual trim level, S, S, E, S, E, L, titanium, do have some lip options available if you want to dress up the original bumper. There was Bojix, there was 3D Carbon from Ford themselves, there was the Zedtech S lip which some cars wore, but if you ask me, this is, always has been, my favorite. What this is, is the Downforce USA front lip. It's the same lip, not the actual lip, but the same model that I ran on Mustard when it had its original bumper. But yeah, this is, this was actually a fairly early addition to the Mark III aftermarket. It was debuted at SEMA 2011 on the ID Agency Focus. Some of you may remember that one, the green, I believe it was an SE hatchback, which featured a bike rack and beautiful HRE wheels and a few other things. But yes, Downforce USA released this as part of a whole lip kit. There were also side skirts and a rear balance. They were available in three configurations. There was full FRP, there was full carbon, which you see here on Dijon and which is what I have. And then there was an FRP carbon fiber hybrid. So if I remember correctly, this section here, basically the vertical section would have been FRP with this lower bit here, still carbon fiber. I for mustard and my mother for Dijon here, we both selected the full carbon pieces because they could go straight on the car out of the box. They were fully finished from downforce, clear coated everything, ready to go. There was no need for a body shop trip to paint them, clear them, whatever. But they were all the exact same style. It was merely a material difference. And I mean, <laughs> personally, I think they look pretty good. Hopefully you guys agree. And basically fast forward a decade plus now somehow. And many people don't really know about these. Never knew that they existed. The install was very straightforward. It's a few bolts underneath. There were holes in the lips which lined up perfectly with OEM holes in the bumper. Some double-sided tape along the upper edge to seal it and give it some extra strength against the bumper, and that was it. Extremely easy install. The fitment, as you can see on hers as well as mine, were absolutely spot on. These were beautifully made pieces. And what's nice is they don't take away too much ground clearance from the car. Yes, they do stick further forward, so your approach angle is affected a little bit. But you'll see they don't actually hang down too low, so they are very easy to live with. Her car is stock height, as some of you may recall. Mustard was obviously very aggressively lowered, and the lip was easy to live with. And yeah, that is the Downforce USA lip. Now, as mentioned, there were side skirts and a rear balance. Again, both were offered in full FRP, FRP carbon, and full carbon. Personally, I've never actually seen anyone run them outside of the original ID agency car. I'm not sure how many people bought them, if anyone bought them. There are a few front lips out there. Some of them do exist. I believe you can still order them. Don't quote me on that, you should be able to. And one thing in particular I've always enjoyed with my lip is that when ID agency had debuted the kit back at SEMA 2011, yes, that's a while ago now, I had been in touch with them shortly afterwards, or I should say with Downforce, shortly afterwards to see when they were releasing the lip. I kept in touch with them, we stayed in communication, and the next year, 2012, they offered me the chance to buy what was the very first ever production copy of the lip. 
So the piece that Mustard wore, and the reason why whenever anyone asks me if I want to sell it, the answer is no. The piece that I had is the very first production copy of the lip. I got it ahead of the official release. They were kind enough to send it to me early. In return, I mounted it on the car with the help of Terrence, took some photos of it, and sent those into Downforce to help them announce and promote the lip once it was available to the public. And that's always been something I've been a little bit proud of. That was a very cool opportunity back in the early days of these cars to have a piece before anyone else that no one else had, and a piece that to this day is still fairly uncommon. As mentioned, not many people run these. I don't think many people know about them. So I would personally love to see more cars running this. I'm a big fan of it. Still think it looks amazing all these years later. And just another way to dress up your Mark III without having to step up to the bumper from a higher model. And with all that, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If there are any other parts on this car or any other car in the group that you want to know more about and see a bit more information on, do let us know in the comments below or message us, and we'll be happy to shoot some more of these videos for you guys. So, thank you all for watching, and until next time, have a good one.